Hi, my name is Cy Porter, and I'd like to show you how to make a cloud fly through in Adobe After Effects. As you can see here, this is one of my renders, so let's go ahead and get started. What I have here are eight drawings of clouds that I did in Photoshop with alpha channels, meaning the invisible areas around the clouds. I save them as Photoshop files. In After Effects, I created a new composition. I named it Cloud 01. I brought in the cloud images and I'm going to take Cloud 1 and bring it into Composition Cloud 1. I'm going to go ahead and make it a 3D object. Right click New Null Object. Now click on Null Object, hit Enter, and name that Control. And click on Control. I'm going to make sure that the Effect Control window is open. I'm going to go into Effect and choose an Expression, and then Expression Controls a Slider Control. Hit Control D twice to duplicate that to make three slider controls. The first one I'm going to name X. The second one I'm going to name Y. Third one I'm going to name Z. The nature of this type of composition is to learn how to easily control many, sometimes hundreds, of images all at the same time. So these clouds, we're going to be working with them in duplicates, learning to adjust all of them at once Click on Cloud1 image file and hit P for position. Alt click on the stopwatch to open up the expressions box. And click on the control null so that the three sliders are visible in the effect control panel. Click in the expression box for the image. And first, I'm going to type in for the X slider control. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type X. I can type X equals and then take the pick whip and go up and choose the X slider. Because I want to work with large numbers, I'm going to go ahead and work in multiples. So whatever number I put into the X slider, I'm going to multiply by 100. And then I want to end that first line with a semicolon and hit enter. And then I want to do the same for the Y control. And what these expressions are, are to control the left and right, which is X, and the up and down, which is Y. The reason I'm connecting it to control sliders that are on the null object is I'm going to be duplicating the cloud image 40 times and I want them to all be controlled by the controllers on the null object. So I'm going to control the up and down and the left and right of them all at once even though there are 40 of these images. And again I picked whipped the Y controller and then I want to work in multiples of 100. With a semicolon I'll close that out. And now the Z, that's the nearer farer parameter equals this layer dot index. And what that means is, do you see how there is a number? And then under here, each layer is numbered. This layer's number is two. If I duplicated this layer, the next one would be three, and the one after that would be four. Well, we can take that number of the layer and use it to multiply the distance that the cloud is away from the camera. So this layer dot index and in parentheses we want to type 10 times and then we want to go ahead and choose the Z control. So whatever variable that we put into the Z control will be multiplied by 10 and then multiplied by whatever number that layer is. So that when we duplicate this image, each image will be further back from the next one automatically. And then what we want to do is type in another parentheses, semicolon to end that line, hit enter. And now time to work in the random placement of each cloud. 
So the first line is going to control the random variable. We type in seed random, parentheses, and here you can type in a seed. Just choose a number. It doesn't really matter what number you type in. I'll type in 2 here. I could just as well type in 10, 12, you know, doesn't really matter for this particular expression. But what is important to seed random here is that you type comma true. And by typing in true, you're saying that whatever random number it chooses, it will only choose that once and then keep that particular number for the rest of the footage. So your clouds won't be jumping all over the place. They will land in a random spot and stay there. Clouds don't jump all over the sky most of the time. They're kind of randomly placed but stay relatively in the same place. So semicolon return. And then the final line is random parentheses left bracket the x variable which if you remember is controlled by the slider up here and then the y variable is controlled by that slider there and the z variable the right bracket and semicolon by putting these brackets on we're going to find a random number for each of these, the x, y, and the z. So it's telling random to pick out three random numbers. And with that, we can close out the expression, which I'll put down in the video descript. Now we have ourselves a cloud that is controlled by these sliders for the null object. And now the magic happens. This is where our job suddenly becomes very easy. We can click on the cloud image and then basically hit Control D. I'm going to do it only 10 times or 9 times to create 10 images. And then what we end up with are 10 clouds. But wait a minute, they're all by each other. We click back on the controller and for one I'm gonna type in just type in some variables here. What we're ending up with are a mass of objects. They're gonna be randomly placed but you have some control over where they are randomly placed. Now I want to create another composition. This is my main composition. I'm going to name it main, and I am going to take that cloud composition I just made and drop it into main. I'm going to make it a 3D object, and you also want to click on the little sun, and that makes it so that if the clouds go out of frame, they won't be cut off. Okay, let me show you. If I take the nested composition and move it over in the main composition, do you see how the clouds are suddenly cut off here? We want to click on the little sun symbol here, and that makes a vast virtual 3D scene in another composition visible if it's nested in a new composition. Okay, our work becomes even easier now. So now what we want to do is in the project window, we want to click on our cloud one composition and duplicate that. I'm going to go ahead and rename that cloud 02 and then double click on it to open it and we can click on the first image and then we can go down and shift click on the last image and then we, what we want to do is go up to our second cloud, cloud 2 image that we brought in in the project window click and drag it and as we drag it hold down the alt key and drop it down on top of those cloud 1 images and it replaces all of those cloud 1 images but it keeps that expression that we typed in and the controls so that we can in the cloud 2 composition we have the ability to control the overall random placement of all those clouds and then we can go back into the main composition and we can bring in the clouds to pre-composition. So now we have 20 clouds that are easy to control the overall placement and we can create a new camera. Now what we can do is move the camera to place the camera in the mass of clouds that we are creating. And basically what I did is I continued that. I created eight pre-compositions, one for each cloud image. I brought them all into one composition. So I've got 40 clouds times eight in this scene, and they're all easy to control. So that's basically how you can 
manipulate a scene with hundreds of images and have a lot of control over how they look, how they're placed, and how the camera looks as it moves through them. Hope that was helpful. Please encourage me to make more tutorials by visiting my free animation at solimation.com and encourage me to create my fictional animation and I hope you have a great day. Okay, bye.